Thank you, Natalia. Dobry den. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak at this conference. Uh, thanks to the uh, uh, Office for the Protection of Whistleblowers and especially to Zuzana, Natalia, and Ivana. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't be with you in Bratislava today, but uh, we're in the middle of uh, complex negotiations on a United Nations resolution on the protection of whistleblowers, and uh, I couldn't come. Uh, and thank you to uh, the previous speaker, Zuzana. Uh, I think what uh, her organization is doing is very similar to what uh, we are doing with Pishtalka, and I think uh, there's uh, uh, obviously room for uh, cooperation between our organizations. Uh, just referencing to uh, the previous panel, uh, I have a book here uh, that we published recently on uh, the uh, uh, case law of the European uh, Court of Human Rights. The book is called uh, Whistleblowing as a Human Right. Uh, this is what we uh, also do. We uh, publish uh, guidebooks uh, for judges, for prosecutors, and we do this in cooperation uh, with Serbian judges and prosecutors. Uh, this is uh, uh, a gui guidebook for prosecutors on how to uh, investigate uh, tips from whistleblowers and how to uh, work with whistleblowers to uncover corruption. Uh, I will now uh, speak a bit about uh, uh, Pishtalka, uh, how we started, and uh, what we have achieved uh, so far. Uh, do you see in my presentation? Uh, we don't see your presentation. Maybe we will ask. Uh... Hold on. Teraz neviem, či nám Vladimír aj zamrzol. Počkáme na režiu. Sa to rozbehať. Uh, sorry, Vladimír, I think we lost you. Tak skúsime možno ešte nejaký jeden pokus. Yeah. Am I back? You are back. Um, Maybe you will have to turn off your camera and just share your PowerPoint because it makes okay. just brainstorming on the spot. You see it now? Yes, yes, we okay, see. Okay, great. So this is how it started. Uh, Natalia already said uh, uh, a bit about this, but uh, Dragana Matovic and myself were uh, journalists in the biggest uh, newspaper in uh, in Serbia called Politica. And uh, uh, in uh, 2009, uh, uh, we, you know, the government, which owned 50% of stake at Politica, uh, installed a new managing team and uh, a new editor-in-chief. And uh, our articles were uh, uh, being censored. So we uh, uh, blew the whistle on this. We went uh, through all the steps that were later on prescribed by the Serbian law. So we went internally first. We uh, uh, notified the editor-in-chief, uh, the uh, 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 newspaper management, uh, the board. Uh, and at the time, uh, the uh, uh, German uh, publishing company uh, Vats uh, was uh, own, own, owner of 50% stake in Politica. And so out of all these uh, uh, bodies, only Vats responded to say that uh, they are aware of uh, the pressures on journalists, but they couldn't do anything about it. And uh, uh, in the end, we were fired. Uh, but in the process, we also learned that uh, the uh, Serbian prime minister uh, was making money uh, in a deal with Politica. So on the one hand, as prime minister, he was supposed to uh, uh, look after uh, the uh, uh, the state stake in Politica. On the other on the other side, he was making money in a deal uh, with uh, the, the newspaper. And so we then uh, went externally. We uh, uh, notified uh, the parliament about this, but nothing happened. Uh, and then we went public. Uh, we uh, uh, 
with a group of colleagues from Politica, we sent an open letter uh, to the public uh, saying that uh, uh, we couldn't uh, do our jobs properly, that our articles were being censored uh, for political reasons, and uh, we were fired subsequently. So this is how uh, Pishtaka uh, started. Uh, we were, uh, uh, this was like uh, a personal experience and we learned from our personal experience that whistleblowers uh, need public support and uh, uh, competent uh, legal aid. So that's what we uh, uh, started off to do. In 2010, we launched Pishtalka, and so far in, the, in these 13 years, we published more than 1,000 articles, and we provided uh, free legal aid to whistleblowers, including court representation. Uh, but I think most importantly, uh, as you said in the beginning, Natalia, uh, we were part of the working group to draft the law. I was on the working group, but also two other whistleblowers were there. And this is with the first meeting of our working group. And you can see Tom Devine, uh, who was consulting our working group, uh, explaining uh, at our first session uh, the basic principles of whistleblowing. Uh, and so the, the working group was uh, uh, very wide. Uh, we had judges, prosecutors, uh, trade unions, chamber of commerce, and uh, crucially, whistleblowers who were able to uh, uh, provide uh, the working group with their uh, experiences how they were retaliated against by their employers. But what's also uh, what this working group also uh, produced was uh, uh, connections between uh, different uh, members of the working group, and especially the judiciary. And so we were able to use these uh, connections uh, to uh, launch uh, trainings for judges. Uh, we established cooperation with the uh, Supreme Court and ju the, uh, the Judicial Academy. And so what we do now is uh, we, uh, uh, we have uh, trainings for judges that are uh, uh, mandatory by law. So all judges that take on a whistleblowing case uh, need to be certified by the Judicial Academy. Uh, they need to go through the training, which is jointly organized by Pishtalka and the Judicial Academy. And so uh, in the past uh, seven years, we have uh, done dozens of these trainings. We trained more than 1,000 judges, and this is an, uh, an ongoing project uh, that we do together with the Judicial Academy. What happened uh, then uh, was that uh, the uh, prosecutors approached us as well. Uh, seeing what we were doing with the Judicial Academy and the Supreme Court, uh, they said uh, they they wanted uh, to have uh, trainings for prosecutors as well. And so we uh, did this. We also continued our trainings through the, uh, uh, the COVID period. We uh, managed to do trainings online. And, uh, and then we uh, started cooperating with the Supreme Prosecutor's Office in providing trainings to prosecutors on how to investigate tips from whistleblowers, but also on investigating uh, public procurement fraud and ethics and integrity. Uh, this, is, uh, this picture is from the uh, presentation of our guidebook for prosecutors, and it's also been uh, very effective. Actually, just uh, last week, we had another round of trainings for uh, public prosecutors and uh, what we uh, usually do in these trainings is either bring a whistleblower to speak uh, with judges and prosecutors and present uh, their case, or we show a video, of, a video testimonial of a whistleblower. And uh, we had uh, a whistleblower uh, last week uh, discuss her case with prosecutors, and we had a very good interaction with prosecutors who also provided some advice to the whistleblower and, and to our legal team. And uh, this is something that we are very proud of. Uh, we are now also educating uh, the next generation of lawyers uh, to be uh, whistleblowing uh, activists and uh, uh, lawyers, whistleblowers. Uh, this is a project we're doing together with the uh, 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 law school in Belgrade, Pravni Fakultet. 
uh, and uh, and together with our friends from uh, uh, the Government Accountability Project, Tom Devine's organization in the U.S., uh, we do a, a, a three-month uh, legal clinic uh, where we uh, also bring whistleblowers and judges and prosecutors, and uh, we do uh, 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 practical training with the students. Uh, we uh, teach them how to write uh, an interim relief request for whistleblowers. And we think this is uh, uh, very useful, both for us and for the students uh, who uh, we hear from uh, uh, a number of them say that uh, this course, this clinic should be made uh, a part of the uh, official curriculum of the, of the Belgrade Law School. And uh, why are we doing all this? It's because of the whistleblowers. So I'll, I'll give a, a few examples of the whistleblowers we are working with. Uh, this is Dr. Borko Josifovsky, uh, who is perhaps the uh, most famous whistleblower in Serbia. Uh, he blew the whistle uh, in 2006 uh, when he was head of the uh, medical emergency uh, uh, team in Belgrade, the med medical emergency service in Belgrade about some uh, medical teams getting uh, bribes from uh, private funeral companies to provide them with the uh, names and addresses of the uh, deceased or the, rather the families of the deceased. And uh, uh, Dr. Yosifovsky uh, established that in some cases, uh, resuscitation was not provided to, dying, to the dying patients uh, because uh, these medical teams were uh, uh, looking for to, to receive kickbacks from the private funeral companies. In some cases, even the uh, uh, funeral companies representatives showed up at the door before uh, the medical teams arrived. And so what happened? Uh, he tried going internally. He uh, notified the uh, uh, Ministry of Health, uh, but nothing happened. And then he held a press conference where he uh, uh, presented all the evidence uh, immediately he was fired and he couldn't get a job anywhere in the uh, public health sector until his retirement about three years ago uh, so what happened uh, because this case was this this uh, case happened before uh, the law on uh, the protection of whistleblower whistleblowers was enacted uh, we used our investigative journalism uh, to uh, uh, research uh, the uh, the case, and uh, we spoke to the families of the deceased. Our lawyers were able to pull uh, the complete files from the prosecutor's office, uh, and uh, uh, then we used the files to uh, track down the families, and we called them, and uh, it turned out that we were uh, the only ones ever to, to have called them to inquire about uh, what happened. Uh, so neither the police nor the prosecutors ever contacted the families of the deceased. And in some cases, they told us, they confirmed uh, that the uh, uh, representatives of uh, the funeral companies ap ap appeared before uh, the medical teams. And so then we went further uh, because Dr. Yosifovsky uh, filed a number of criminal complaints about uh, this case and some other cases uh, at the uh, uh, emergency medical service, including public procurement and uh, some financial irregularities. And we were able to prove that uh, his criminal complaints were uh, 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 being uh, uh, put to, uh, uh, to, the, to the side. They were not being investigated. Uh, and uh, then we, uh, our lawyers filed uh, a, a lawsuit on the protection of whistleblowers, and uh, uh, we won. So this was uh, Dr. Yosifovsky's first ever court victory, and now he was being uh, hailed as a whistleblower. And he said uh, when we held a press conference uh, after we won uh, the case, he said this was his vindication after uh, 10 years. Uh, 
and uh, unfortunately, then we lost uh, the the government appealed uh, the uh, uh, the court ruling, and then uh, we lost on appeal. But we are now uh, waiting for a decision from the uh, Serbian Constitutional Court. But as I was saying, Dr. Yosifovsky was very proud of this initial court victory, and he said it was his vindication in the public. And uh, this was this this is something that we are very proud of. Uh, the next case is of uh, Sanya Marjanovic, uh, who's an employee at, uh, uh, in a small uh, municipality in the south of Serbia. Uh, she's in charge of uh, 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 budget, and uh, she, uh, uh, she's in charge of creating the budget for this municipality. Uh, she uh, discovered and reported illegal illegal budget budget spending, and uh, she was immediately retaliated against. She was moved to another office uh, where uh, uh, she had nothing to do, and uh, then but she had time to uh, uh, to go online, and she found Pishtalka and she approached us. And uh, we were able to uh, uh, provide her with free legal aid. Uh, our lawyers were very uh, active on this case. And so Sanya Marjanovic uh, received interim relief, meaning she, the court ordered uh, the municipality to reinstate her to her old position. And then uh, she won her court case and she is now back uh, in her old position, doing what she uh, knows best, and she's still uh, uh, looking after the the local budget in the town of Prokopje in the south of Serbia. And another case uh, that hasn't been so successful, uh, Jelena Markovic Milosevic. She works uh, uh, in a prison uh, just outside of Belgrade. And uh, she and uh, uh, one of her colleagues uh, reported that uh, the warden of this prison was building a house using prison funds and labor. Uh, what happened was that they uh, uh, went to uh, uh, the uh, Ministry of Justice. They notified the ministry about this. Uh, they filed a criminal complaint, complaint with the prosecutor's office. An investigation was started. We were closely following this investigation. Uh, we were able to, uh, our legal team was able to uh, uh, submit uh, interim relief request and she won because she was, uh, she had been transferred to another prison. And after winning the interim relief, uh, she was uh, reinstated to her old position. Uh, but then the retaliation continued. Uh, she faces uh, five disciplinary uh, proceedings against her for uh, absurd things. And so she now receives, I think, about a quarter of her salary. Uh, we're still trying to uh, uh, help her. Uh, she is uh, very uh, thankful for what we are doing for her, but we feel like uh, we could have done more and we'll, we'll, we'll keep trying. Uh, she was the whistleblower who last week uh, addressed the prosecutors at our training, and uh, the prosecutors were very moved by her story, and uh, we are now hoping that uh, the investigation will be uh, opened up again and that the uh, corrupt warden will suffer some consequences for his actions. So uh, what have we uh, learned from... Uh, uh, these uh, trainings and uh, all that we are doing. Uh, we think it's important to, uh, uh, let me just get to the last slide. So uh, empathy. Uh, if you just go about uh, doing the training by uh, citing the law and the uh, European standards, uh, you will not uh, go far because the judges or prosecutors uh, coming to the training will soon forget about this. But if you bring a whistleblower uh, with a story of how they uh, 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 noted uh, what that there was a threat to the public interest and this threat 
may include uh, the lives of your uh, loved ones. Like, you know, we uh, often bring Dr. Yosifovsky to the training or we show a video of him and then judges and prosecutors react because they are aware that if corruption is uh, allowed to uh, uh, go on, that uh, they and their loved ones may uh, suffer from it. So we try to bring out empathy uh, with our uh, trainees, with the judges and prosecutors. We also do trainings for uh, uh, whistleblowing officers uh, in the private and public sectors. Uh, we try to bring everybody together to uh, uh, help whistleblowers and in the end help ourselves uh, protect our society from corruption. Uh, we also like to uh, uh, share experiences of all the different actors. That's why sometimes we, we bring judges and prosecutors together or judges and whistleblowing officers. Uh, we also brought uh, judges and journalists together, prosecutors and journalists. I, we think this is very important because uh, sometimes we don't understand each other's positions. And, uh, and I think that uh, with whistleblowing, uh, we can uh, all uh, uh, learn to be uh, uh, both empathetic and uh, uh, help whistleblowers because they help protect the public interest. And what's also important is that uh, all state stakeholders should be uh, continuously educated. Uh, we are now negotiating with the uh, 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 National Academy for Public Administration uh, to uh, launch uh, a series of training for uh, uh, the uh, employees on the uh, uh, state level, uh, like in the ministries and agencies. And we think that uh, uh, this will also uh, serve uh, whistleblowers uh, to the best of all our abilities. So thank you. Uh, and if you have uh, any questions, I will be here to answer them. Thank you. Jacqueline.